Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. Today we're doing one of my favorite kind of shows. I've got two women in the studio who love sex and aren't afraid to talk about it. We're going to cover everything from dating to sex toys to what really turns women on. Enjoy the show. I know I will. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. A girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information, go to sexwithemily.com. You can easily subscribe to the podcast. We put everything in our fingertips. So you just really just like click the subscribe button and you get our newsletter, social media, and most importantly, subscribe to the podcast. We love when you do that. Um, You can also shop my store, support my amazing sponsors. And um, gosh, I just love you all. Thank you for listening to the show. Um, I'm really excited for my guests. I'm jumping right into it. You should just hear our... this show is as hot as the mic checks that went on pre-show. I'm pretty psyched. Um, okay, I'm sitting with uh, two awesome, smart, amazing, sexy, empowered women. We have Amy Baldwin and April Lampert. And you guys have both been in our sex toy industry for a while now, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Both of us since 2008. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I bet you got So this show, like I said, we're going to get in some good old-fashioned sex, dating, sex toys. And um, I know Amy because we, well, I've known you both from the shows. You right. guys were like the hot girls at the shows like I wanted to be friends with. But then when I knew you guys were best <laughs> friends, I'm like, I love you both. We can all hang out. Um, but Amy, I did Somatica together. We went through our intensive training. Um, so we bonded. We've gotten closer. So I can't wait to talk about that. I know April's got a lot of relationship stuff going on, divorced, but now like, Friends. God knows, having liberated. so much fun. Having liberated. so much fun all over the world. Last night. Okay, so this is a big sex month for sex industry people. Not actual sex. I've had fewer sex partners this year than I did. To last year. You mean starting 2017? Well, 2017 oh, zero. It's, like, it's, like 12 12 it's only 12 days, days in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to beat myself up. No, no, it was fine though. But I'm saying I didn't have a lot of sex in 2006. But it was fine. It was like by choice. Mm. The point is we've got indus- sex industry parties and there's just a lot of fun stuff happening. So I'm glad you guys both could be in town and be here. And I'm going to get more into all your dirty details soon, but first I'd love you to join me with a little sex in the news. Ooh, yes. Yes. Just to kind of wet our appetite here. Yes. yes. Okay. Erotic books can help women with low sex drives. It was a study. Um, a recent study reveals erotic books like Fifty Shades of Grey could help women combat low sexual desire, which we probably... Right? We know mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. But the interesting thing is 24, um, approximately 24% to 36% of women between the ages of 30 and 59 suffer from low sexual desire at some point in their life. 34 to 59? Yeah. From 30, yeah. Be, between the ages of 30 and 59 mm-hmm. will suffer from low sexual desire. Oh. Haven't you guys, have you suffered from not wanting to I used to, but now my appetite's just so wet. I'm ravenous. Literally. Really, and I'm right. 34. Right. Okay. Because, yeah. But you were married for a while. So why? That's, Maybe that's why. That's it as well. I totally. It's I'm like, not going to say, but that happens. And now you're awakened. And totally. Now it's like, and now I can't get enough. Oh, I love that. Okay. We're going to get into that in a second. I got to get through this news. The thing is, what they say is <laughs> bibliotherapy is slowly emerging as an effective and cheaper way to solve sexual desires. And so what they're doing is they did like a control group where they, a study where they had, they gave women a self-help book and an erotic fiction book to read. And it showed that both of them actually helped increase their desire, right? So it says that um, 20 women from age 30 to 55 in reportedly happy marriages read the self-help book, while 27 women from the same age range read the erotic fiction both groups received the same instructions and were given reminders three weeks into the experiment to complete the end survey, and they found that they made statistically significant gains on around desire, arousal, lubrication, whatever. So I just think this is great because I know in somatic we talked a lot about, and in life, fantasy is important, and, and getting sometimes your brain just is not on board with wanting sex. And so what as women, like what can we do to kind of get ourselves in the mood? So I was just, I think this is, I'm always talking about that on the show, and also myself, I should probably stand to read some fiction, watch more porn. I mean, I do, but yeah, not enough. There's always room for more. But what about you guys? Do you ever read erotica? 
Yeah, and I always recommend that to clients too when they're trying to get a little turned on. But I like the idea of the combination of kind of little self-help going inward, looking deeper into what's going on with the desire as opposed to just throwing in something spicy. Right. Um, I think they go hand in hand. You know, usually like we learn in Somatica, usually it's something deeper. It's not just like put a bandaid on it and everything right. will be okay. Exactly. Like, go like, in there. Yeah. Buy a sex toy. I would think Rada could have pictures. Oh. Right. That right. would be my thing. I'm a visual <laughs> Right. So porn. So do you guys, so that was my next question. Do you guys, do you watch porn? Of course. Oh yeah. Okay. I want to know what kind of porn you guys watch. Oh, I need like threesome. A, two girls, one guy. And you just go to the, do you go to like a certain, you porn.com, <laughs> <laughs> you porn categories, go not, down to the sixth not an endorsement. <laughs> That's why it's the same thing. Not you keep ex- which it's they, not an endorsement. They're not one of our sponsors, <laughs> but do you just, and every time you masturbate? Um, yeah, usually I can use my, my imagination, but I do better with porn. Right. And no shame around it either. No. Right? Cause I try to get women, a lot of women who have not maybe thought about it. They're thinking, Oh, I don't want to have sex with my partner, but try to watch some porn, some erotica. Like sometimes you got to do a little bit extra work and this is not like hard work. Right. Yeah. I'm not asking you to like go on shovel sweet snow. porn too. That's not <laughs> and then so have sex. Very yeah. like watch porn. <laughs> shovel mm. snow and well, yeah, that could what be What about nice. you, Amy? What do you... Um, I really like dominance and submission, specifically women being dominated by men. Right. I think that's hot. That is hot, right? That that's is. one of the top female yeah. fantasies. Mm-hmm. So I just... um. So, and what about... So Amy owns a store called Pure Pleasure. Yes. Correct. Pure uh-huh. Pleasure... Dot I have all your Pure pleasure shop dot com. Yeah. shop dot com. Um, what is some of the bestsellers you think books that you have there? Books. Uh, well, it's what we recommend because we're definitely an education based store. So when people come in and we just figure out exactly what they're looking for, um, I always recommend books like she comes first. It's kind of a classic. I love it. We just talked about that. Had on the show. Yeah. Ago. I love yeah, it. That's a classic. Um, I really love the book urban Tantra for people trying to get into the Tantra realm because it really speaks to all people. A lot of Tantra is very much like the man and the woman. And right. this one really speaks to all genders. Oh, I orientations like it. it's okay. really yeah really beautiful good yeah all right such a phenomenal job with it thought you'd know because yeah. the store thing and everyone can check out your store we'll give more information but it's it's in santa cruz yep correct yep little and with mother daughter own mom and the mom and oh, me selling sex mom toys. too yeah me and mommy that's so cute <laughs> yeah. i love that yeah she works there too she works on the floor she's fabulous she's oh my amazing God, so there's like no secrets between you guys. no 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 secrets no right. we talk dildos all the time right, all the, that's amazing <laughs> i got my mom to like ease into some lube stuff but yeah. that's about it that's a good place you know. to start um, okay, so April, you work, you've worked in the toy you industry. I actually started at Pure Pleasure initially. Oh, you did? Is yeah, that how yes. you guys became yeah. BFF? Yes. Well, we met, well, so we met before that <laughs> in a restaurant. We were both working in the restaurant industry maybe 10 years ago. And uh, April got hired. I was already working there. And she was telling the story on her first day about going to a party and getting spanked. <laughs> and... And I turned bright red because I was like, oh, my God, well, I, I love this Well, I proceeded to actually d- spank myself yes. in, fr- in the back kitchen yes. area. And, and I was like, oh, my God, she's my soulmate. She thought I, <laughs> she thought I actually hated her because she was like, oh, did I just scare her away? <sighs> and then Amy sad. said she's going to open a shop. And she's like, I want you to work with me. No for way. Me. Be the I- assistant manager. And I said, I have never worked in retail, and I don't even own a vibrator. Right. And she was like, oh, gonna, I'm going to change that right now. <laughs> He has it's, a vibrator and, and a job. my life. Yeah, and he has a job. <laughs> That's amazing. Ten years ago. Ten, that, yeah, yeah, around the, yeah. 2008, okay. eight and then was when we opened That it, is yeah. like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. And I here you are now. You totally. guys are like knee deep in the industry, yep. killing totally. it. We're in lots of hats. I couldn't imagine. I was going to be a lawyer, and now I'm selling dildos. My right, mom I was, is so proud. All right, exactly. No, I was going to be a lawyer, too. Oh. I took the LSAT, and here we are. It's yeah. fine. It's way more Good choice. Way better. Lawyers are not as happy so much as we better. are. I know. Um, okay, so, but Ava, you worked, so you work for... Fun Factory, director of sales for Fun Factory USA, and right. then um, just changed on. to Hot Octopus, which is like the best. They're amazing. So awesome! Congratulations on Thank that. Because I know I always like see you guys at the show, so we'll we'll continue Absolutely. to keep see each other. So, okay, so we've got your background. I need to know. Okay, and you guys are how old? I'm 31, going on 32. Amy's Ooh. 31, and April. I am 34, going okay. on 12. Right. <laughs> Emotionally, I get it. Okay, so what relationship status with you both? Oh, uh, for me, we're going to call it single with an it's complicated uh, attachment okay. to it. <laughs> okay, it's complicated. Yeah, but, uh, but but single at the moment. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. So, all right. Single and, yeah, yeah. Still sleeping with the ex, but it's not really committed. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Ish. I actually don't yeah, know. Ish. Okay, yeah. got it. Ish. You, got yeah, it. And, he's, and he's not here right now. He's pre- not present right now. So okay, it's good. Time and space to heal. And right, we all need that. It's yeah. just time and space heals all. Okay. April. I am newly divorced. It's almost finalized. And this is the first time in my life I've ever been single, like since I was pretty much 18. 
Wow. How long were you guys together? Seven years, but I had a boyfriend before that for six years, and I was in another relationship with a girl for a little while. Wow. Okay. Things. Okay. So you, so then, and then how long were you married just now? Um, seven years. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And you're coming out of it. So now you're like, what? You're just like, it's like full on. Ass. Oh my God. What? It's so much fun. <laughs> I feel so connected to myself. I'm just like this power. I, I don't know. It's, I found my power. Tell me, okay, what, so when you were getting divorced, you didn't have, feel like you had this power before. What, tell well, me it's just, power. I wanted to be like a good little wifey, like so sweet and, and domestic and, you know, good to my husband. Sure, I'll get on top sometimes, but, you know, just missionary me all the time, you know. Even after working in this industry, there's a lot knowing, like, yes. you know, you've got tools that you're supply, you know, totally. Artifact, you make amazing toy. You were just like, I'll be the it dismissive. Was just, I mean, and I understand it's a, it's an issue to, to have consistently amazing sex with your partner. Oh yeah. It, it really is. It's and, a, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, but I've definitely awakened from my slumber and I'm feeling so great sexually. So are you just kind of sleeping around right now? Meeting? I, well, I mean, I'm, I'm taking in a good way, bit in the best of a possible. break. Yes. But I've been, cause I traveled all over the world selling sex toys. I've been in Chile and Brazil, um, Spain and Germany and Australia and, and Thailand. <laughs> and so I've been, yeah, really experience, experimenting having, culturally. Right. That's amazing. Right. Okay. It's been fantastic. That, so that's, I want to hear. So your partners that you've met in different countries, is there anything you'd like to say about lovers from different parts of the, the world? Um, I, I, oh my God, so many things. So, um, I'm just curious because people are always encouraging me. They're like, right. well, you should take a German lover. You're well, in Germany. You should take I had lover. never dealt with, um, uncircumcised cocks oh, before. Talk to me about that. So, and I, I had a guy, a Scottish man with a, with a Prince Albert piercing. O M G, <laughs> new interesting things. Also, the, let's explain what that is for people who, oh, who might not know. It's, um, it's a, the head basically they take through it sounds this sounds very intense i'm not a doctor but it's like through the urethra there's a the the barbell goes through there and then yep. it's like so yeah really really interesting okay. and he and he was uncircumcised he was uncircumcised right. i guess only one in like 20 people in scotland is circumcised right so interesting yeah. um and then uh like what i've learned about people all over the world like it was like the year of anal licking like i was like <laughs> what is happening like i totally like, i've never experienced you just named that the podcast we're oh. gonna call this one the year of anal licking <laughs> but i think there's gonna be more wait so because every every guy you were with just wanted to lick your anus yes i i'm like is this a new thing i didn't get this memo like i'm into it but usually i'm like let's do that in the shower just you know because i'm like hey yeah interesting so yeah. even before they lick your vagina yeah are they licking your anus first um usually no, usually it's vaginal licking first. Okay. And then it goes into the anal licking. Also, this might be graphic. I hope you don't Please. mind. Oh, come on. But this guy in Thailand went down to me when I was having my period and he knew about it and he was like into it. Really? Good. Okay. Scottish guy. And again. how did you, the Scottish guy, he was Freedom. <laughs> He was totally fine. He was it's totally a choice, fine. right? He it was is. into your pleasure. I know. And he wasn't all tripped up on it. So I just felt very, it was liberating. That is, right? Yeah. Because nothing's wrong with the period. It's a choice. Guys can be like, ew, grossed out. Or he's like, I'm into this. Uh, one thing I do for every guy that I've been with in different countries, I send them a care package afterward <laughs> with Fun Factory products. <laughs> And I'm That's like, here's what? to please your next women. Like you have to know, cause they're most 99% of them have been terrified of products. Right. So it's been awesome. And so they it's like a departing gift. A they get a gift. parting gift. I'm like, think of what me do next you send? time. You guys, Fun Factory makes such cool. Like, like uh, I usually send them, um, um, the Cobra Libre, right? um, which is a male masturbator right. as well. And then a bullet. So I'm like, whenever you do it, doggy, bust this out and put <laughs> it on the girl's clit and she's going to love it. <laughs> And then oh my God, they love you. They, yeah, I have a fan club. So every time I go to these countries, I have, you know, different houses and different area codes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that you said them party gift. That's not a bad one. I, That's a yeah. really good idea. It's yeah. brilliant. Um, I used to, yeah, no, it is brilliant. You're never going to get any bad like reviews no. on Yelp or anything if it comes to that. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, have you noticed anything? Because I noticed something about anal licking too, I'd like to say. I had in my few sexual experiences in 2016 by choice. There was some more anal licking than usual. Yeah. No, I had what about you, a, I had a very interesting anal licking offer when I, had, oh, I hadn't even been intimate with someone, and that was something that was offered to me. It was, Do you think it's because of because in porn they're seeing it more served up on the porn menu? Maybe. Yeah, I guess. No one was licking my anus 
randomly eight years ago. Yeah, or it's yeah, just neither. something in the air. There's the energy of anal in the <laughs> air. I think there is finger. the energy of anal. I know. A finger, but not just a lick. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a yeah. whole thing I had now. a guy who went right for the licking. Like, he was like, flipped me over and wanted to lick. I'm like, no, there's some, that's why I asked you, April. I was like, can't we start with like some other licking first? Yeah. Like, maybe my nipples or like go right. down. Right. Work I was your like, way right in. Today. But I had been warned by a friend. That, that he was, he was very. She said to me, oh, you're going out this guy. He's great. He loves butt play. That's all she said to me. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. But I just met him. Like, I'm Bumble. Cool. And then we had one date. Sure enough, we were like making out. Obviously, he's like flipping me over. I'm like, oh my God. And then in my brain, I'm going, oh, he really is. And then I kind of slowed him down. And right. Then, yeah. But anyway, I didn't know. I feel like that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. I, the okay. year of the ass, huh? Yeah. What about your um, sexual? Would you say, I know we're at the start of a new year, but in the last year, were there any sexual highlights for you? Oh. Amy? Yes. Um, yeah, definitely. I think I've, I think every year I've, step higher into my like most juicy essential self right? i just get better with age like a fine wine it's true don't so, you think yeah. so how yeah. would you, how do you feel that you stepped into it this year is there uh, any like one pivotal one moment that was like a highlight yeah i mean well just like an overall gen- like general more embodiment and like stepping de- or dropping deeper into my body and it's understanding of the pleasure that it wants and more orgasms and more ejaculation more juiciness more connection more transcendent sexual experiences where i'm like leaving my body for extended periods of time okay let's do that, wow. That's- <laughs> we do that now. was that now would you think it started with our somatica training that helped definitely yeah i think that really okay. helped bring me in my body that was a big practice of what we were doing and so i think it really helped to turn that up like yeah turn up the heat there and more connection into that part of myself i feel so i feel like it was a great i feel like i, I know that you're also seeing clients yes. now too yeah, yeah. and so i'm not going to do that but i i feel like i still want to be doing more somatic like it's not it's a part of me because I, st- but I want to like still be engaged. Yeah. Like yeah. doing stuff. It's a powerful here. practice. It is a powerful practice. What was your, um, I don't know. I've talked about on the show. I always try to like, explain what it is. Yeah, and what how, it's how, how do you explain it? Uh, well, I like how they describe it as a relationship lab. And so when we're working with clients specifically, uh, we're really trying to develop this intimate relationship with them to heal old attachment wounding from their parents, from their upbringing, um, where we become that secure attachment to um, show them the way of secure attachment, to right. show them what a healthy relationship can be. So we step in kind of as that um, right. as, th- as that role for them. And so I'm doing that with a lot of my clients. And, and a lot of it, it, it really is, we're doing a, lo- a lot of work on wounding. It's all, they come in, they're like, I can't have orgasms. It's your parents' fault. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so talk true. about your childhood yeah. right mm-hmm. it, it is always i mean is that like parents are doing anything purposefully no, like they well know you have to yeah. get the point where you're like my parents did the best they could yeah. with the knowledge they had but something from your society something that happened in society or in school or with your parents is going to kind of hold you yeah. back sexually yeah. so you're like helping them release yeah those abandonment and lack of trust and safety you know they have a hard time going into their bodies being in their bodies because their body doesn't feel safe because it maybe it wasn't respected people didn't show up for them people abandoned them and left them and neglected them where there's actual physical trauma trauma, emotional trauma, it's all just these layers and layers of pain and trauma and shame that we're undoing. We're like right. spending a lot That's of time amazing. just unraveling that. I'm so that. glad you're, you're doing this yeah, and helping I, it. I love it. It's, it's really beautiful. <sighs> God. Everyone like, needs it. Do you guys it. have any amazing stories, though, from your training? Oh, from Somatica? Emily yeah. and I have a really special I want, story. We, did. we had a moment. We had a moment. To hear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tom, that was, okay. So the exercise, I think it was... Uh, I was supposed to touch you and bring my eroticism to you in the touch, and you were just supposed to receive. You weren't requesting. Right. You were just kind of laying there and receiving. And I have a lot of experience with conscious touch, and I teach classes on conscious touch, and I'm a meditator and into mindfulness. And so I started touching you, and I, w- I, I didn't realize it wasn't erotic. I was just like <laughs> touching you with this mindful way, you know, paying attention to all the senses and all these things. And then and then at some point, I think... Was it, Dan- was it Danielle? She came to Danielle, sat down. She's like, that doesn't look very erotic. Emily, how is that for you? Like, yeah, it's not very erotic for me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, okay. And I had this, like, this kind of aha moment of um, that there's different levels of conscious touch. And there's a difference between conscious touch and conscious erotic touch. And that we have this ability to turn on eroticism within ourselves and then to bring it outward. So through that, that like fail <laughs> view. <laughs> That's how we learn. Yeah, exactly. And then 
And so through that, I, I actually learned, you know, I, I, I failed in that moment. And then my next exercise, I think it was with the beloved dragonfly. We love dragonfly. Love dragonfly. And, shout out. And yeah, shout out dragonfly. And just learned that I could essentially go within to myself and just to go in there thir for 30 seconds, kind of connect with my inner so body. Set with it. You, yeah. Okay. Go in there. Just take a moment. I talked to clients about this too, so we have the ability to just go within feel our bodies, you know, feel our genitals, feel our pussy, feel our cock, go in there, like feel this churning, warming energy, open your eyes and then go outward and bring it to the person in front of you. Mm -hmm. And I learned that I can do it for anyone. Like I can do it for yeah. you know, any gender, any, it's just, I can turn on You can turn on your, and that's and, what yeah. it is. And you that, taught see, me that, Emily. Thank I did. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I love that. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, we all help each other in this class, but it's interesting because people hear this going, what? But when you are a, a somatic practitioner and you're working with clients who are you know, have a problem with, you know, are ch struggling, have challenges around like desire, arousal, erotic thought. We have to be able to bring, like turn it on in any moment with some, bring that erotic energy. If you're like, well, what if you're not attracted to the partner or what if you're not attracted to your client or what if you can't, but what we're saying is like, we learned is like, you actually can't, like it's a choice in any moment. Yeah. Go in your body. Fantasy is a big part of it too. You know, you can look at this body and say, Hey, you're not usually my type, but I'm going to use fantasy and assign a whole different body to you. And it's nothing against you. We all have our preferences. And, you know, I could look, because I'm definitely more attracted to men than I am to women. So I could look at a woman, turn them their body in my eyes into this, like, hot man body and just... Just and that's totally them. fair game, right? <laughs> yeah, and totally. Then you, and you bring healthy. energy. Yeah. It is healthy. It, it doesn't mean anything against the person. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, if it's your partner and you're still using fantasy of someone else, it doesn't mean you don't love them. It doesn't mean that you're not attracted to them. It means that you have some awesome tools in your spank bank that help you to go deeper. Right. And why not? Because you're giving them... Um, a lot of hot arousing energy, so it's it's a good thing. Right, that's really good. That's really good. it's it's true. I had never really. That's why I was saying I need to watch more porn. I mean, I, obviously I do, but I feel like that was a big takeaway for me from Somatica too, is that I really don't like a lot of times I'll just whip out my toys and master, but I'm not using my brain a lot. Mm. I'm not. I'm not using my brain. I'm not like turning it on and having a fantasy. It didn't. I didn't naturally have like I have some bondage. You know, I have some dominant ones, like some basics, like mm. whatever, but nothing that was more elaborate and that you can actually work on your own story. What about you, April? When you do you um, have like an erotic? Do you have a an erotic fantasy? What's in your spank bank, April? Okay, yeah, to be honest bank? with you, <clears throat> it's really when uh, it's it's I, I'm more attracted to men than women, um, as well. But it's when the guy is like making a lot of noise and then throwing in some dirty talk. Oh, yeah, that's hot. That's hot. I yeah. love dirty talk. I love talking about how dirty, like, my pussy is. <laughs> right. You dirty little slut. You exactly. like it, don't you? Oh, yeah. Is see? that why the guy went down? You're like, well, I know it's kind of dirty with my period right now. <laughs> I want you to go down on me. But that's hot. That it's um, I don't re recall exactly <laughs> what, <laughs> what spawned the, the uh, yeah, the, what, I don't, is there a name for that when the guy goes down on you? There probably is a name. We should name it. We what should. What is it called? Red? I have to look it up. It's, it's like, something bad. It's oh, something. Red wings? It's red, red, wings. red wings. It's red wings. How did I know that? Oh, oh he's wings. got his red wings. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> and he lived to tell. And, his, and he accepted did. the care package. And P.S. Yeah. It's true. Like the Scottish people wear kilts and they don't wear underwear underneath them. They really don't. No. He was in a kilt? Well, no. <laughs> he, while he was red winging in a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> that is my fantasy right there. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, you guys. I have a question for you, though. Okay, so being in this industry, right? We work. We sell sex to it. People, do you feel like... There's these, this assumption oh, yeah. around who you are and what you do. Yes. Um, totally. And has it affected your dating life? Um, yeah. It, I think it yeah, depends on the environment. Yeah. I, I definitely have people that think that I'm uh, a little intimidating. Uh, and I also have people that think that I'm into everything that I talk about because I'm also a sex educator. Right. You know, I teach workshops on sexuality. At your store. Yeah. People so, can check it yeah, all out. I also teach things on like Tantra and... Uh, male sexual pleasure and anal 101 and I actually into most of those things but there are some things that I'm talking about and educating on that aren't a part of my private practice but people just assume like you're in the sex industry you're into everything you're poly kinky queer all you know all these things and um you know I'm I am me and I'm a lot of those things and I'm also not right. a lot of those things I'm just curious because I'm sitting here with women who you know like April do they like think you're gonna whip out the duke like on the first um <laughs> yes right it's, it's like where's the duke it's like They're the like, double oh, penetrative you must be so kinky I'm like well I mean 
I don't know, I guess, but I just sell, it's a commodity, you know? I mean, sex toys are beautiful. They're enhancing tools to make your sex life better. But also for me, I'm in sales. So it, it's awesome to bring orgasms to people one vibrator at a time, right. but I'm not some kinky closeted, you know, like I have 900 vibrators. Although when I go to the I airport, TSA <laughs> thinks I'm crazy. Yeah. She does have a lot of I vibrators. Literally yeah. Yeah. I literally like oh. it's a problem. Nice. I do have a judgment, a little bit of a judgment against, uh, I, because I work for a lube company. I work for Uber Lube. So right. When I actually go and to, um, into the man's bedroom and they don't have lube, oh, I'm, I'm so, so ju- ter- yeah. Like, okay, wait, let's talk oh, about lube for a lube. minute. Okay. Yeah. Lube yeah. is one of my favorite topics. Yes. Yeah, everyone I should have lube. lube. I am a huge, well, obviously, lube. Like, yeah. it, there should be no stigma around it. It's no. to make sex better. It enhances every situation. There's this, they absolutely. say, like, why would, why would we need that? Why, why would I need I bring my I don't own need lube. That. I bring Uber lube to the gynecologist because right. I don't want them to use, like, the whatever. Shitty KY. Yeah, yeah. No, I got you. I got you. But it also, women, like, don't you feel like, even if people are like, I don't, I don't have that problem. I'm not wet. Like, I, I mean, I already get yeah. wet. But even with a lot of contact, like, back, back to right. back, you do end up needing lube. You don't always well and, and the wetness thing there's this really great book have you read come as you are yes so good uh, yeah. such a good book i think that was one of our textbooks that we had to read actually Probably. for our textbook for somatica i didn't read any and, of them, but and I, she talks about it's arousal <laughs> non-concordance <laughs> and and in arousal non-concordance is that we have um this idea that there's certain things that go hand in hand with arousal and if you don't have that it means you're not turned on and wetness is one of them which actually so many and wetness is based on so many things hormones you know sometimes you're wet one day sometimes you're wet and not wet another day and it doesn't mean you're not aroused right. and and vice versa too um you know it, it's just there's just like this this judgment on people that if you're aroused you should be wet and plenty of people don't always get wet and it changes day by day i have a blocked gland there's the bartholin's glands that yeah. produce um, vaginal lubrication one side of my glands completely blocked and so i have less lubrication than other people doesn't mean i'm not turned on by you so i use my lube Right. I no, agree. I know yeah. it's so true. And I actually, one of my lower sexual experiences of the year, I was with some guy like, you know, I don't even remember when this was. He's like, oh, get wet for me. Are you wet? And I was like, because we know so much being sex educated. Like, I might not, I'm usually wet, but I might not be. And being wet is not a sign that you're necessarily mm-hmm. turned on. People are shocked to hear that all yeah. the time. You could be on a decongestant and not producing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, There's liquid different times in of month. That's the other reason why. It got, I, mean, I think that a lot of people think it's a fail if their partner's not wet. We're just yeah. here to tell you that it doesn't always mean that. Everyone should own lube. Right. And Absolutely. really good lube. Right. Mm-hmm. And good Check condoms. The ingredients. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. good condoms. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. I hope to use condoms in, in Always. your travels. Um, so um, I'm curious, though, about your starting out sexually. Like, would you, how did you guys learn about sex when you were younger? Did you? My mom's Kama Sutra book that was hidden underneath her bed. Yeah, so, good. Well, got, I know. Awesome. I started masturbating when I was like six years old. I realized I had this bear, this stuffed <laughs> animal bear that I used to hump. I'm sorry. I, I'm just full no, disclosure. No, because you, why is, not? Yeah. But six years old. And I was like, what is that? That feels really nice. And then that was like my secret place. Right. And she never left the bedroom. No, I get <laughs> it. That's they, a lot of girls. have. Started, I was just curious because I. Right. Yeah. What about you, Amy? I, I think I learned about sex through probably the media for the most part. And then. My mom had a couple books that I would hack into and find them. And I don't remember what they were, but I would look at them and get kind of turned on. Um, what about orgasm? Did you have like a riding your bike when you were seven thing? No, you know, I was a late orgasmer. I had my first orgasm from a vibrator that um, when I was, I think, 18. Okay, so I wasn't, same. I wasn't, oh, wow. I was a kid that was curious about my genitals. Like I would check them out and be like, so oh, what's this? Hump any stuff no, 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 but, but a lot of kids I'm so too. jealous of women like April because. Yeah, me too. There's yeah. so, I always like, oh yeah, I was like taking the, the, the shower pivot to my vagina when I was like three. I'm like, yeah. or six usually it's sex that didn't happen i'm just like oh, you're so lucky yeah. i know a lot of stories about the humping bears and totally things. a lot of, it's really it's really it's common normal. more normal ish than i don't yeah. know what, no, there's no well normal. i think yeah i, I think every normal. It's all, all about you i think when you look at children though i always use this in my sex education um when i when i teach is that when you look at children they're natural pleasure seekers like little two-year-olds all they want to do is things that feel good this feels good i'm gonna put it in my mouth i'm gonna put it on my genitals i only want to feel good and when it doesn't feel good i'm gonna freak out and cry and then society gives them a whole bunch of shame and a whole bunch of shoulds and should nots of how they should be and then they conform and they stop seeking pleasure and then pleasure becomes a shameful thing and now as liberated progressive 
of adults like we are, not everyone in the world is that. Um, now we're undoing all those layers of bullshit that society's given us to get us back to that original pleasure seeker, Mickey Mouse's nose on my clit way. Right. <laughs> exactly. No, or it's bear, true. Or whatever. That's kind of what you're doing, like the somatica training yeah. and the somatica therapies. Like people, we don't even realize what we're carrying around for us. There is it comes a point in every young woman's life and a man's perhaps, but usually a woman where you're like your body is dirt, like cover up, mm -hmm. cover up your breast. Shame. You can't walk around at six years old without the top. You know, like there's that time where you realize, oh, my body is shameful or yeah. dirty, and so and we hold on to that until we. Let it go. Yeah. So yeah, I didn't have. I was just curious. I love knowing about orgasm yeah. experiences. But what about now? How important is orgasm to you? Like when you're with a new partner. Mm. I I mean I try to During be as like not not non goal oriented as possible because for me goals equal pressure and they just you miss all the yummy stuff along the way on the journey. And as I say that, I do love orgasms and um, I love an array of them because I have so many different types of orgasm that are even like beyond my, my genitals as well. Um, so I think that it is something it's to me, it's, it's a bonus. You know? What are the other orgasms beyond your genitals? Well, like energetic orgasms, like things that you can do, have experience, like transcendent experiences that are like orgasmic without touching genitals. Have you ever had one in your sleep before? Like those kinds yeah, of like like long I, time ago. Yeah, like sleep gasms. I, I sleep through them. I now. have sleep gasms that are like that movie inception where in my sleep, I will know that I'm dreaming and I'm having an orgasm. And then because I know I'm dreaming, I can have it over and over and over and over. This wow. doesn't happen all the time. People just so you know. <laughs> Oh, I wish it did. Um, You're going to change your address. Yeah, number. I know. No, Jesus. But, <laughs> but wait, but, but okay. But was that something that just always happened to you or did you work on that in your sexual studies? Well, um, I, I mean, yes, I had a sleep orgasm once. Worked, not not yeah. nearly enough. I think as, as I've expanded more and become more orgasmic in general, it's opened up the doors for more opportunity to have different types of orgasm. And um, you know, there's people who have, sp you know, once could feel in their genitals, right? And so they could have orgasms in their genitals. And then they get a spinal cord injury, and then they can't feel in their genitals anymore. And so they're able to eroticize another part of the body, like the pit the of their ears. arm or the ear, right. and have orgasms through that. So genitals actually just don't have to be a part of it. And, you know, the brain is, is your largest sex organ. Absolutely. So there's a lot of other options. And I also think, too, you know when you see a live performance, and it's so powerful and so beautiful, and you get that shudder in your body? To me, that feels really orgasmic. Right. That, like, Oh, yeah, no, feeling. I've had that. I've totally have had. I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was orgasm, but I've had a yeah. full body. Yeah, experience. I'm just big on like expanding the concept of it outside of just like the genital contractions. Right. No, you're right, right. and that is the right sex positive way to go. So sex positive, you are. <laughs> but here's my question though: When you're with a new partner, how about, do you know? Like, is there a certain go to move or way that you know how to orgasm during intercourse? For I example, it depends on what I'm trying to achieve. Like, I know what can get me to the level to female ejaculate it's not always you know a an equation that is is accurate like it takes different things and different partners but i know what when it's gonna happen and when you're like, gonna oh, ejaculate do this. and do you think you do you both ejaculate yes. you said oh god yes. so why are we why juicy are we hello as juicy can be <laughs> so okay so i but do you think that when you ejaculate are you also having an orgasm Yes, I really do. It's like this buildup and then this release. And then it's just like, I definitely feel it's different than a, a clitoral orgasm right. for me, for sure. But it is more, almost more intense. Yeah. No, I have, but I feel like sometimes I've done it and not had an orgasm or I've sometimes they go hand in hand when that all the stars are aligned. Right. Yeah. It's a little bit of both. Sometimes hand in hand and sometimes it's its own Amy? thing. A nice, really nice release. Did you guys like teach yourselves how? to do it? I, it I ejaculated my very first time I had an orgasm and that was with a vibrator using a vibrator on was my clit. Was it clip. a magic wand? No, it was oh. a little water dancer. Oh, yeah, oh. A little okay, the water by the, by the same company, yeah. Vibratex Water Vibratex, Dancer. Yeah. And I used that, and I and I knew what it was. I'm like, this is ejaculation, but it freaked me out. At 18, I was like, ah. okay. And um, it did that for a little while, and then eventually, even though I was, I knew what it was. There was still a level of shame, not not from a partner, just within myself of like, I don't know, it wasn't it wasn't super normalized to me, and so my body kind of turned it off. And so I had a dry spell from age 20 to 25 or 26, where I, there was no more ejaculation happening and then I had a really profound sexual experience with someone where they milked that g-spot and the, the, the floods started all wow, over again. Wow, that's good. So yeah. he knew what he was doing. Yes. Way. Yeah, or it was either that or just enough pressure to really work that urethral it is sponge. through the g-spot, right. It is yeah. Well, mine happened after I was wearing Kegel balls for like you know, really working on my pelvic floor strength. And after that, like I was being so regular and I, I mean, it's definitely, you know, the pelvic floor is, is responsible for so that? many things. Right. So after that, then it was 
through with the, the magic wand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, same. Yeah. That was the first time, but I, I do it during like sex too. Now I have the mm. first time was with Scotland. Again. Oh, it was Scotland. Scotland. I was like, oh no, don't say his name. Oh wait, the country. I'm it's not. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna say his name. Okay, now I got it. Yeah. But but wait. Okay, so let's talk about pelvic floor because I do wear the kegel balls a lot, awesome. and I do this thing. The intensity. Do you know the intensity by Perwa? It's like electro stimulation that you oh, put yeah. in. Totally. It's amazing. So that changed my life because I have an iPhone app called Kegel Camp that I launched like four years ago. And it was mm. like, it reminds you to do your kegels every day. Great. And I love that. But I was like, just because I have, just because I'm doing my kegels doesn't mean, or the alarm comes on. Like I, I wasn't as motivated. Like I do it, but, that, but then I started wearing the balls a lot. And did you just wear them around, right? Right. Doing my daily activities. Like I'll like go All to the long. grocery store right. or walk mm. your dog. And that really, like don't you, okay, because so I'm glad there's an, have you done this too, Amy? Where oh yeah. I? My friends and I used to go for walks on this place called West Cliff, like on the cliffs by the ocean. We call them uh, K-ball walking. And we're just all I, okay, I love this. So I, okay, so I've talked a lot on the show about my experience. What was your experiences after wearing the Kaggle balls and how did it change your, pe- being your having a strong pelvic floor? Mm-hmm. You know, first we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to talk about your pelvic floors Ooh, and great. how strong and uh, how it changed your life having strong PC muscles. Okay, so uh, thanks everyone for supporting my sponsors. I love them and um, I hope you do too. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. We're talking about your pelvic floor. Okay, so what did you guys realize after having stronger PC muscles? How did it impact for, your life? For me, it just made my orgasms longer, stronger, more intense. Um, and really, oh, I went to the gyno and I put the, <laughs> he put the speculum inside. I have a male gynecologist. And he says to me, you should be a pelvic floor model. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? He said, you know, people that are training to be gynos, they need to like have people to practice on and you have such a strong pelvic floor. You can hold the speculum in for like 20 minutes. I'm like, can you take it out? No, but thank you. (laughs) I'm like, see the Kegel balls. That that is the best story I've ever heard. (laughs) It's your gynecologist. Mine once said, you've really nice abs. And I thought that was inappropriate. It was a man. But this to me is amazing. I mean, it was, I was like, well, thank you. And I'm like, should I just flex? I'm flexing. (laughs) I'm flexing. But don't you feel like, and you don't see, I don't know if you guys ever have that when you sneeze and you pee or something, you laugh. Like the, I had some of that. Okay. You right. Don't have that yet. But also I feel like G spot, like my whole, I was having more orgasms. I was more turned on. Right. Mm-hmm. I still am. I mean, right. I've been doing it. So do you, yeah. what about you? What about I, you? I mean, I think, yeah, this, so this, as, as a female bodied individuals, you know, we don't see our arousal, which is like, we don't get erections and all of a sudden there's like this big thing in our pants. So I think uh, Kegel exercises really help us to tap into that part of our body. Not only is it toning to help with stronger orgasms, but even just utilizing that part of your body, like actually just, just flexing the muscles gives us some connection and awareness and can actually lead to arousal too. So that's it. That's yeah. what I always, that's why I do this. I, I do something every day. I'll do the kegel balls or I'll do the intensity because I feel like just breathing into it and having that consciousness around my body is like it, it turns me on. And that's mm-hmm. what I always tell women as well. I, I, keeping I, I keeping up with your kegels. Yeah. When I do trainings all over for products, obviously. And one thing that I like to tell people, it's like any muscle, you know, like any muscle, if you don't work out, what's going to happen? It gets loose. It gets and weak. think about yeah. having a loose, you know, vagina. Right. Doesn't sound appealing. Nobody wants that. They want it like, you know, healthy. So... Uh, that's so, and that really does. I feel like gets 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 into people's heads. So, right. okay. Well, yeah. we also live in, also in this in this society where where it's not something that is like widely taught to women that um, the idea if you don't use it you lose it. And there actually is some truth to that. That as we get older, the tissue changes and the muscle structure changes. And a lot of times when women go through menopause, the desire shifts, and so they're actually not using that muscle. And then the desire shifts again, and they want to use the muscle again. And at that point, it's really weak. And so then they have to go back and use dilate. And yeah, when, in fact, if they had been exercising that muscle all along with Kegel exercisers, that might not be as much of an issue. Ah, you're absolutely right. I love this. So download my iPhone app, Kegel Camp, and buy some balls. Don't you think? Do you Get do mine your own now? You mean you guys aren't both wearing balls? Maybe you are wearing balls We now. should have worn the Amy balls. Amy gave me my first pair of balls. She did. <laughs> she did. We share balls. But I do love, I go through periods where I'm like, I'm just wearing them all the time. And it's, awesome. It's amazing. Okay. So my next up topic, uh, <laughs> just thinking, where else can we go? Blowjobs. Blow oh. sex. I just think that when we talk about, I always get women, I ask them like, what, how do you feel about it? What mm. are some good tips maybe for women who aren't as into it? Like, do you have any special go-to moves, things that people... Whenever I teach blowjob classes, my oral sex classes are always, and you teach those too, right? So it's always like, 
the the one the only thing that I know that works for everyone is enthusiasm. Just like being happy to be there in the presence of this beautiful cock that's in front of you, um, and everything else. All the other tools and tricks are um, are great. I don't think there's like one thing that necessarily applies to everyone, except for moisture, I like well lubricated vibration to a blowjob yes. really does help. And I love like cupping the balls with something. Yeah, don't forget the balls. The, the balls, balls are very they, they love some love. And Absolutely. Yeah. Or I holding the balls like the balls those little like those yeah. stress balls. The stress balls you can buy in China. Town, like kind of moving, massaging right. them like that. That's right. Just- Balls like that. That's right. Right. Oh, buy those to play with. To, to no, no, just touching the balls like that. Or that's also, what I say too. Those yeah. Benoit balls. Yeah. That's how you hold them. Like, and then, and right. then also, you know, the cock extends even back into the body beyond what you see in the balls. There's more cock and more shaft down there that also loves some access too. So the cock keeps going. Don't neglect the, the exactly. base of the cock. Lots okay, good. What about some um, cunnilingus tips? Things that you particularly like or that you think they've been helpful in your hmm. meanderings through life. Cunnilingus tips. April's uh, ex-husband like? is, was known as the pussy whisperer. Oh, that's good. That's and you still was. divorced him. Is he single still? Uh, <laughs> I believe so. He lives in Israel, but oh, no, it's cool. so yeah, too far. I mean, I'm Jewish, um, but I'm, oh no. yeah. Are oh, you Jewish? Yeah. Oh, we're, oh well, me too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, did we talk about this? I'm, I'm I was quota. Jewish okay. by injection. I mean. <laughs> Um, the thing I'm, that, I'm not going to date your ex anyway, but no. <laughs> but I want to hear about why he, why he was known as a pussy whisperer. So I think the thing that he did so well was the sensual nature. Like the whole like ABC thing is oh, totally God. bogus. Right. right? Like, and I'm like drawing the alphabet with your tongue. No. Please. And people get too hard with their tongue. I think the softness of the tongue and incorporating not like a lot of hand movements along with, um, with, you know, the action of the tongue is good. Use the you know the vagin the, the vagina is along with the vulva don't just use not just external just yeah not right. just external play but we have a lot of listeners young male listeners who have never done it and they're nervous and free oh. so I know it's like beginning too they always want to know I'm just thinking talking to women about what they like I always talk about uh, praising the pussy because there's a lot of pussy shame so like right when you get down oh your face God. is in front of the pussy let that pussy know how beautiful it is like oh your pussy is so gorgeous or if you don't say gorgeous but like just praise it <laughs> i agree hail to the pussy hail the pussy okay you guys i would be i would remiss i would be i would be remiss if we didn't have a conversation about sex toys yeah we're all in the industry of course yes. so i need to know what's like your favorite toy right now like your go-to for you personally if um, you have one okay i so personally it's so simple but it's uh-huh. like the most versatile I love just a simple bullet that's powerful because you can just use it anywhere and it's like compact. So you can just throw it in your bag. I love that. Just right. a simple bullet with bullet. a lot of power. Yeah, that was like my first one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I get it. The a rechargeable a waterproof, like one fun factory makes like, an awesome one, but right. I know that we vibe does too. We vibe is a tank. I love the tank. Yeah. The tango is really tango is like, nice. When I first saw it, I was like that, there's a bullet that can do oh, this yeah. and, and go underwater. I do love, um, adding a vibrating cock ring to stuff too, because yes. it do, like, it really does enhance and change the experience. Cause like if you're riding, you know, on top, you can get vibration, um, on your vulva. Exactly. While you, so it's wonderful. I love a good cock ring. Me too. It's true. And it's a good entree too, for a lot of couples, a lot of people who have not tried toys with a partner. Right. They're like, Hey, we all get the vibration. Because you don't it's need funny. it to use it just to like maintain an erection. People get, you know, kind of right. caught up in that. Like That's you say so cock school. ring, they're stretchy and they're so versatile. So I think right. It's an enhancement tool for a good sure. Cock ring. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Aim? Uh, okay. Here we go. So for vibrators, I, I'm a, I like the power and I like that deep thudding power, not the light buzzy bullshit. Um, so I would go with a Mystic Wand because I like smaller ba- battery operated. So Mystic Wand is a Vibratex toy. Um, or if I'm feeling like I want something a little smaller and more quiet, the Crave Duet because it has mm. that deep thuddy vibration, but it also is tiny and doesn't make any sound. Bring it everywhere. Which is fabulous. You can bring it everywhere. Um, and then I'm also, I like some anal toys. I like anal plugs and Joyline. Love that. Love stainless oh, steel. Yeah. Stainless steel yeah. butt plug. Yes. That's and, fun for the whole family. Yeah. Stainless steel is wonderful. And then, um, Lube, Uber Lube. Every time, every time I'm having sex, it's always there. The other things like vibrators and butt plugs, they come in on the occasion. Lube is always present. Yeah, lube is, a, is a staple. I totally, yeah. I totally agree. Now, I also have a lot of um, questions from listeners who are always concerned about bringing toys into the relationship. They're like, I have a toy. How do I get my partner to try it? Mm. And I know with us, it's like I know people come to my house and they assume like there's probably toys drying on this rack, or they just know what I do for a living. But I don't know. 
I mean, you teach classes. Like, how do you, and you Honestly, talk about it all the time. What do you I tell think people? As a hetero female coming from, you know, me being um, with mostly men, incorporating like the hot octopus, that it's a male masturbator that can be used as a couple. So it's, it's a like, gu- it's the bri- it's it vibrates, the right? It vibrator. It, it, it's a vibrator and it oscillates. So it has this like technology that like kind of thumps. So incorporating, I think, a male bodied, if you're a hetero um, person that uh, is, you know, hetero, hetero right. female is really useful. I mean, couples toys are always the best way right. to I go. think so too. Yeah. I, like, I, I love a good couple, like a good strong cock ring or a, anything. Yeah. 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 Kind of talk yeah. about that. Couples toys. I think the scary thing for couples is like, what if it replaces me and it feels better than me and that dildo, you'll want that instead of my cock. Um, the dildo doesn't snuggle. The dildo doesn't connect. There's right. a lot of things the dildo cannot replace. So uh, check your fears and stop with the shame, please, because that is quite shaming to um, sh- shame someone. For I always say it's an enhancement tool. Yeah, and that's it's, yeah. yeah it's it just makes things more message. more exciting and spicy. And if you're really terrified of the dildo replacing you, then use a smaller toy or something that's smaller than you, and then you feel better because you're hence all big. Hence the care better. package <laughs> exactly. with the bullet. That's yeah. why I send every guy. A yeah, care you don't with the send them like a huge no. Uh, right, dong. Dong. Looking yeah. I was going to say dong. Uh, man, I was trying to come up with something else. But dong, <laughs> dong. You send them a little one, but it's true. I'm always surprised that that's still the thing after it's 12 still, years. I'm yeah. like, really? People still think they were replaced by yeah. the. But there still is that fear. Yeah, thing. very much. Okay, I would love to invite both of you to invite um, answer some questions Woo, from my list it. from the people. Would okay, so everyone, to. thank you for emailing me. Uh, I love when you email me. It's so fun. And if you go to sexalemmy.com right now, we make it so easy because there's a little tab. It says Ask Emily. When you click on that, you can write your question there, submit it, boom, we get it right away. However, there's now an option where you can just click I'd like to be called or something like that or consider for a phone call. And now we're taking calls. So Eddie will set it up. Eddie works with me. He'll set up the call and um, we'll get to like get into your stuff live. It's really fun. That's awesome. Or just send me, I'm cool with that. Just send me the written word. Also leave me a voicemail, 818-ASK-SWE1. That's super fun. Also include your name, uh, your name, your age, where you live and how you listen to the show. All right, ready? Here we go. Hey, Emily, I'm in a friends with benefits relationship with a mid 20s lady who I see weekly. I've asked about going to the testing. um, I've asked about going to going the testing slash no condom road, but she wasn't okay with it. I respect that, but can't get it off my mind. When we're together, I frequently have this in my head um, about going without and I end up cock blocking myself. How do I shake this madness so I can concentrate on the sexy woman I'm with? P.S. I've used skins and the new Lalo condoms. I love skin condoms. Mm. Uh, Phil A. Uh, A. Fifty Four, Las Vegas. So, do you get what he's asking here? He's asking. Um, he, so his partner wants to go like no condom. No, yeah, no. she won't. Yeah, she won't get tested. She won't work. And she won't get tested. Right. <clears throat> and so, well, I think he, she needs to get tested. It's so easy. Wonder, I yeah, wonder what the fear is in getting tested. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think if he's, they're friends with benefits, like there's no, you have to work condoms or you need to find another FWB. Like, right. Like, yeah. like, why would you risk that? Yeah, it sounds it sounds a little on the the risky side. Yeah, um, but, I mean, yeah. he's using condoms. Yeah. Right. He says he's using condoms. I That's would say good, continue but... to use condoms until I would never want to be with a partner that was like, I'm not going to use condoms. Yeah. I'd be like, okay, well, and, That's the first and I'm not going to get tested. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, dude, this doesn't sound good at all. He's yeah. 54. She's 20, mid 20s. Uh, this yeah. is a weekly. Mm-hmm. I don't like that she's not okay with it. Yeah. Like I would say you could probably find. It, it feels else. a little unsafe and a little questionable. Yep. I agree. Right. With and he's also um, having trouble. What do you say? He's having trouble. What getting this? Cock blocking himself, he gets hard keeping oh, it up. Gets all well, yeah, I get it. Head. A lot yeah. of guys get nervous because they're afraid they're gonna get pregnant, he's gonna get S T D. That makes sense. So yeah. um you know, yeah, of continue course. on the condom route. And if she doesn't accept that, then maybe it's time to find a new yeah, friends yeah. with friend with benefits. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we've got another email here. Um, this one. Okay, dear Emily, as a result of my infidelity, I'm in the process of getting divorced. When I began dating, uh, when I began dating, at what point do I discuss my past behavior? Do I reference my past in online dating bio or even in initial conversations? I feel I'm damned if I do bring it up. No one wants to be with a cheater and damned if I don't. Uh, wouldn't you want to know before considering to date someone who's cheated? Thank you, Steve. Ooh. 
No, Steve. When you put it like, hi, I have two dogs. I live in the country and I'm a cheater. Like, no, you're not going to put this in your dating profile. No. no. Definitely It's fine. Not. No, he's still beating himself up. I feel like right. this is a conversation I don't even think needs to come up on the first date either. I think this is something that like gradually over time as you get to know someone comes in organically. It's not just some of these things that's sitting in the back of your head like, I must disclose every bit. When of- it feels right. And if you yeah. want to get to the next level with that person, yeah. then it's like, okay, this full disclosure – we obviously like each other. This is going to go to the next level. I'm going to tell you this is what happened and these are the circumstances. Yeah, this is why I cheated. Right. Sometimes you cheat because maybe you're not supposed to be with that partner anymore. Right. That was, I mean, like, yeah. And also just to kind of normalize it a little bit, a lot of people cheat. <laughs> it's really common. So you're not right. this like outcast in society. You'll probably say that and they'll be like, I cheated too. So exactly. Um, and there's so many different ways to cheat. And it doesn't have to be physical. The there's whole emotional cheating. Once a cheater, always a cheater thing though. I don't believe in that. No. I think that's like something that people that were cheated on kind of say to make themselves right. I don't know. I don't think that yeah, you can't you can't make any generalizations no. like that. That right. is true. And I just think that he's still Steve, you're still beating yourself up for this. Yeah, yeah like, be nicer to yourself. Like you feel like this is like this scarlet letter or something like he yeah. can't get past that he's always gonna be a cheater. Or that, you know, they're gonna shame but li- yeah, it is true. It's not the first date, so I cheated on my wife, and that's why we broke up. I mean, that's not what you're going to bring it up. But I think eventually there comes a time in relationships where you talk about it. And I really don't think this is like a deal breaker. I'm sure there's a reason you did it. I'm assuming you don't always want to be a cheater. Yeah, did you learn from it? Sure, right. there learn, you go. grow. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. I used to be a cheater. I've talked about it. I'm a reformed cheater. I cheated on everybody. Reformed, like, you know, I like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just reformed didn't commit. Cheater. I don't yeah. commit, typically. So yeah. I don't cheat anymore. It's yeah. It really works well. No, but I don't want to cheat. But I did in the past. I never got caught. It was a whole thing. And I'm over it. But yeah. it's fine. You can move on. And you it's learn. okay to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I've got questions for you guys now. Oh. Five questions. <gasps> and um, they're rapid fire. So okay. don't think about it too much. Okay. 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 Um, first, I'm going to ask Amy. Then I'm going to ask April. Okay. Biggest turn on. Amy. Oh, dominance. Um, clitoral stimulation. <laughs> biggest turn off. Uh, oh my god! I don't know. What would be my biggest turn? Anyone that sticks a finger in my belly button? <laughs> okay, I think you see butt. Don't touch oh. my belly button. Biggest turn off. Um, not being vocal enough while you're in the midst of the uh, orgasmic experience. Got it. Okay. All right. I like Silent to, orgasm. Yeah, I like, did the, you come? Did I'm you like, not? Come on, did you go out and order pizza? Where did you go? <laughs> I right, love okay. that. Craziest place you've gotten busy. Oh, um, well, with the pilot while he was flying the plane. Shut up. <laughs> Like a yep. plane with other people on it? No, it's like a two-seater plane. Okay, got and it. And he was flying his own private plane. Dude, you're so dangerous. Yes. I, I like to it. live life dangerous. I don't know. I could never top that. Crazy place you got busy. <laughs> um, on a long tail in Thailand. <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> <Was it> Scot- <laughs> freedom. <laughs> you in Scotland. Wow. Why is it that Scotland? Got? Was he wearing his kilt? Um, no. <laughs> I love him. Okay, sexiest word to you, Amy. Oh, uh, pussy slut. Pussy slut, you slutty girl. I love your pussy. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh... Uh, what, what? Sexiest word to you, April. Queen. Boss queen. <laughs> That's right. What's the one thing you wish you could tell men about female pleasure that they don't know? Oh, to go slow and then slower than slow and then slower than that. Um, use a lot of your hand motions on the vulva, it feels really good. Use the vulva more. Not just the vagina, but the people vulva. People don't know. The, a lot of people don't know. Oh. Maybe external it, anatomy. External, yes. Right. Pay attention. Right. Pay attention. That's a really good one. You guys, thank you so much. You guys, this, was, you. this was a delight. Well, fun. This was this so much fun. been in the makings for so long. I really... I love you guys both. So let me yeah, tell you, we put this also going to be on our website, but Amy, the best way to find you, you teach courses, you're seeing clients. Yeah. How's the best way for people to find you? Uh, best place to find me, you can email me at amy at purepleasureshop.com or my website, www.purepleasureshop.com. And we have a little newsletter box there. And I know that's for a retail store, but that's also actually how I um, email out my clients too for my somatica practice as well. Perfect. There's sex education classes and online classes and all kinds of fun things. So that's great. Yeah. You're kicking ass. Come find me. Good. Okay. April, are you just... I am... Well, I would love for people to check out hotoctopus.com. It's from London. Amazing products. We ha- we're going to have some really fabulous um, new things that no one's ever seen before coming out this year. Uh, at least six new products. Oh, cool. So check out Hot Octopus and um, yeah, just, just... Just keep following you around and... Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm on Instagram, she's, she's a woman. but I'm private. Oh, you are private? I mean, yeah, but if, if you look like at... 
the you private. You sound very screen. private. I know. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> she's got to be private. I mean, she, okay. she's got to keep something. If you want to talk to April, get a hold of me. I'll screen you. Yeah, and see yeah. Thank you. They're best friends. Yeah, You're we're best friends. friends. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. This is wonderful. Thank this you, is Emily. Just beyond my wildest dreams. Okay, so thank you guys, and thank you to my amazing team. Thank you, Madison. Mm. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Jamie and Ken and Lori, and um. Who else do I want to thank? Thank you, Michelle, who's here taking pictures. My buddy, Michelle. Thank Hi, Michelle. you. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for listening. Was Oh, here's the other thing I did not mention. You should follow me on social media. It's so fun. I love uh, doing it all. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. It's all Twitter. It's all sex with Emily. That's so easy. Okay, I love you all. Thanks so much for listening. Was it good for you? Email me. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. <laughs>